everybody, it's Carol here today. I'm excited to share with you that I am the guest designer for the month of June for Loaded Envelopes Galore and More group on Facebook. And our theme for June is Tea in Paris. Don't you just love that theme? I adore tea and have collected quite a few different dyes and things for my stash that have to do with tea. I just love this theme and I'm super excited to bring it to you for the month of June. Just a few reminders. We have until June 22nd to do at least 70% of our project and post the pictures on the swap group. And then our partners will be assigned and we will mail our projects on June 30th. Please post your tracking number on the Facebook website by that date as well. So to get started, I'm going to let you know that I did leave some links to some free teacups and teapots and also some SVG files should you need to purchase any. And I'm going to show you what I used because I am a dye lover. I have these dies in my stash and perhaps you do as well so for the requirements for the swap you're going to need to do a teapot stack which is what you're seeing right here there are three teacups you need to do a minimum of three teacups and then you're going to do a julie nutting doll and also a teapot in inside your teapot box you will need to put four tea bags because what is tea in Paris without some tea and three small tags. I'm going to show you what I used for my project. I used this die right here from Sizzix. It's a Brenda Walton die. It's 658351. It's teacup 3D. It's also been discontinued. I'm very sorry about that, per but perhaps you have that one. I also used this Julie Nutting stamp. It's Audrey. It's one of my favorite. And I also used this die for my stash. It's quite large. It's a 12 by 12 die. It is 658236. It's an extra extra large die. <laughs> no, it's actually called a um, pro die, I think it's called. Yeah, Biggs Pro. It's a box teapot. So that's what I used. And then I also used, I will show you the paper I used. It's this right here, the Prima Amelia Rose. It's a beautiful, beautiful paper. It just came out so well with that. I love it. So let me explain to you a little bit about how to put this together. I'm going to bring it closer. Okay, and as you can see, I have it mounted on a little candle holder, candlestick holder that I picked up at the thrift shop or you know any of the Salvation Army or Goodwill stores. Now I did mount a Laughing Cow cheese box on the top of it that I painted black but just as a tip or trick you do not need to do that. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree and you could easily mount your teacups on this. It's about the same size as a Laughing Cow uh, tea laughing cow cheese box. I'm sorry I got tea on the mind. So you can pick these up for a dollar. You could get two if you want it to be this high. Glue these together. You could paint them, cover them with cardstock or designer paper, however you wish. You don't even need to use a candlestick on the bottom of it. You could actually create the whole thing on top of this. So that's a suggestion for you. Also to put the teacups together there are some files that you can purchase that have saucers, so you wouldn't need to do it this way. You could just stack your uh, cups on top of the saucer. 
but if you're going to do this way or you have this die what I did and I'm going to show you that's why I turned it around it's easier to see I had hot glued some paper doilies on the inside and then glued my teapot on top of the doilies and it's very very sturdy it doesn't move it doesn't shake or anything it is really in there good so use plenty of hot glue behind the doily so it doesn't show and then under your cup because this particular cup has a little circle in the bottom of it that you can put the hot glue on and then under the uh, footing of it as well so that's how I did that and I will share with you that I created these floating words these are all individual letters from my Cricut and all you need to do is mount them with a glue that dries clear onto some acetate and then make it long enough so that you can put the glue down on this side and then push it up to the front of the cup and this little T has been glued right there so that this isn't going anywhere I'm gonna bring this closer so you can see probably with the reflection there you can see how in is on the acetate and it's a little more acetate on this because I had the eye and then I wanted to make sure that it was in there good and you can see it's not going to go anywhere and then this particular word right here that has the Eiffel Tower is off the summertime in Paris cricket cartridge I cut it off on uh, three sheets of white paper and mounted one on top of the other and then I cut one out in black and put the Eiffel Tower on top to get the two different colors on that just in case you have that cartridge if not you could just put your letters uh, as you wish so you could see I put some trim some handmade flowers here is my beautiful Julie Nutting doll Audrey uh, this one keeps swinging around to the other side for my tea tags I've got a cottage cuts Eiffel Tower right here just a little bling and a butterfly on this one and also little bling and butterfly on this one and I'm going to turn it around as you can see I put flowers in a matte type of silver decorations on here and then I put some tool behind my doll to kind of soften the back of her because I didn't want to create another doll on the back. If you would like to do that, you're more than welcome to do that. And then I'll show you the top. I put some doilies in the top of my cup, attached some flowers, and then in the back I did some tool. And then I used this swirl here because it reminded me of a hot cup of tea on how the steam would be coming out and I thought that was kind of cute so that's it for that remember you need to do three cups you can do more if you want but a minimum of three and then you need to do a teapot box now if you don't have this teapot die don't worry we have uh, links to some SVG files for you to purchase or you can take another uh, I provided you with like a template for a teapot and you can make a teapot box yourself there are plenty of uh, what do you call them <laughs> tutorials on YouTube that show you how to make boxes so this is my teapot box and I just used some punched lace and trim that tea was cut off my Cricut. This is an Eiffel Tower bling that I had in my stash that I've had for quite some time because I like to collect also Paris not, as well as tea things. And then this is how I decorated the back. This little thing right here is a bead that has some nice sparkly bling on the inside of it I thought it was cute as a top to my teapot and then I'm going to take the top off and you can see inside 
my teapot and I put in four tea bags. Yes, they did all fit in here of different types of teas. And then I have some tags. And don't forget your tags need to be small enough to fit into your teapot. I think my tags are about, I would say, three and a half to or, or three and a quarter inch, not very big. But I did use double 110 pound cardstock because I have a very decorated top and I wanted it to be very sturdy. See, that's not going to go anywhere. That's not going to fold over or anything. Plus the designer paper on top. So take that into consideration when you're making tags that your really decorated tops don't get bent over. So use good heavy cardstock and designer paper. This is a little uh, die from Cottage Cuts that I use. And these roses are actually a Tim Holtz Sizzix die that you roll they are very very tiny i love making my own flowers but they are they're hard to control but i love it this right here is a cottage cuts eiffel tower and again the tim holtz little roses that i rolled i just enjoy that this is a martha stewart all the butterflies are from martha stewart on here and the bow dies from my stash this is also a cottage cuts die I did a stack of three cups on my tags to match the cups on my uh, tea stack over there so that's that and that is all you will be required to do for this month be sure to have your 70% of your project completed by June 22nd and the mail date of June 30th. I also want to tell you that this is not required. This is just something that I used for my prop. Uh, I had the summertime in Paris Cricut cartridge out and I've always wanted to do the Eiffel Tower. And because I had the time, I decided to do it and it's this right here and please this is not required for your project I just wanted to show it to you this was cut um, nine inches on my Cricut and I think it came out beautiful I just love it I actually cut the Eiffel Tower eight times I did not use the 110 pound cardstock I used a regular Michael's black cardstock, but I glued it one on top of the other. And I took into consideration that you have this curve here, so I didn't want the paper to be too stiff in order to get it together. But it's very sturdy, and I just wanted to show that to you. It is not required for this project. So I would like to thank everybody for stopping by today and we'll see you at the Loaded Envelopes Galore and More Tea in Paris swap. So take care everybody. Until next time, happy crafting.